My name's Kirin. I'm half English, half Thai. I've been living in Thailand for about 15 years now. I've moved here after kind of planning a gap year. I was going to just stay for six months and then go back to university, but it turned into 15 years. So at the moment I'm doing graphic design and a uh, little bits and bobs in entertainment, but mostly like art and graphics. Living in that environment, like uh, in a small town in England, which is very, of course, and culturally yeah. very different from, from Bangkok and Thailand itself, yeah. how do you think the environment like that shaped you to who you are today? How did it shape me? <laughs> I don't know whether it, uh, how it shaped me, but I think my dad's rules when I was small were quite good. They weren't fun at the time, but his like manners and he had lots of rules, um, and he didn't let us watch TV. So we would have to just sneak and turn on the TV and just keep an eye out whenever he was coming back. He wanted us to be outside a lot all the time. Uh, took us camping and like very outdoorsy didn't let us play computer games and if we were speaking too loud at the dinner table we'd have to do little fingers which is putting our little fingers on tables and just sit silently until he would allow us to speak so growing up with that and when I go to meet other people I'm aware of like having to be maybe I don't know if it's overly polite or overly like well-mannered he took, it was good in a way, but it wasn't fun. What are the some of the? Is there any situations you think, oh, that that well mannered things that you have to practice since you were young actually really helped you out? Um, meeting lots of people. So when we would get told off a lot for when when they'd have dinner parties or when they'd have friends over, we'd have to we'd have to be polite and just sit in silence or just like mm -mm, until we we could go. Like we'd have to ask, oh, can I be excused or can I whatever. Yeah, so I still, I'm still like that now when I uh, go to a dinner and I meet new people, I have, you have to be polite. What are the things that you are working on right now? Uh, the things I'm working on right now, um, I've got quite a few art projects, there's some stickers, some interior design things for a brand in England, some logos, some all sorts of like arty stuff. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're working on more of the artwork stuff? Yeah. Than like acting in the yeah. industry right now. Yeah, yeah, oh. a lot more because I, I did study this uh, this field at university, and it's what I I think I'm more talented at. <laughs> yeah. But we can see a lot of talent when you do acting and all. Uh, okay, I'm, yeah. Multi talented. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so what what do you think is your in in terms of habit in terms of personality traits? Yeah. What do you think is your strength, greatest strength? And weakness. Strength. Um, strength. Being very adaptable to what I'm working with, like uh, having to work with lots of different clients and people who want different things, and being able to draw in lots of different styles or using uh, different programs and whatnot. So, weaknesses. I'm very indecisive, so I need somebody to point and say, I want this one, this one, this one. If not, then I will just keep going and just making more and more, like, useless stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there, is there any way that you try to, like, avoid those weaknesses of, of affecting your work? I try, and it gets me quite worked up sometimes. It's like, why can't I just pick one? Why, why can't I just like choose? Okay, I'm going in this direction. And then when I start doing that, I think, oh, but what if? Oh, let's do that just in case. And oh, let's do that just in case. So I try and like squeeze it down, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah. usually what you do is just, okay, let, just, let it be like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, so now we are getting more into the habits and stuff, not yeah. habits, but personality traits. Yeah. Um, so for you, what it's mean, meet Sai to you, to what your, to your understanding? Um, meet Sai, like, personality traits or person like someone's personality yeah is there how is it important to your life to your goals and, and all those things that makes you you my own personality i don't know but i like to be surrounded with people who are kind of uplifting and positive so just being in a 
positive environment and it's like nobody's dragging you down it's everybody's trying to go forward and like uplifting oh now we are like having the girls attracting question now okay <laughs> so um what are the kinds of people are talking about like oh this is my types of of, of people that i i personally like yeah. like you know uh some more like long hair short hair I don't know, thin, uh, dark skin, and all of that, the appearance yeah. thingy. But now we are talking about like habits and not habits, personality. Okay. Type. So what inside. Are, yeah. <laughs> is, is there any personality traits that you're like, oh, if I see this in, in a person, then it gives you a week on your knees or something like that? Week on your knees. <laughs> yeah. uh, something that you would definitely like, ooh, that's nice or something like that. Happy, just happiness. Smiley, happy, fun to be around, um, has a sense of humor. Can have the piss taken out of them and not be offended. So, playful, yeah. Uh, is there anything that you have tried so far and you think that, oh, this always works and this always doesn't? It depends on the people, but sometimes joking too much doesn't work. So, have, have, there's like a fine line between uh, being friendly and fun and being overly sarcastic. Um, is there anything that always works? No. no. Just well, smile, smile. But then some people think that I'm crazy. They're like, why are you always happy? Are you high or something? So it doesn't work all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ah, snap. Is there, in a serious, let's say, a okay. serious meeting room, Yeah. if you were to meet like a, a really like, should put this a high authority people okay. like a boss yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. like that uh, but I'm not sure if you have been in an environment like that if, if you were to like walk in there what do you do apart from smiling is there anything you do to break the ice sometimes when I have to go and talk to uh, clients there's like a whole group of them and I sit and kind of take in what's what's uh, going on and just kind of see what mood they're all in if they're in like a kind of toned down let's just keep this work work then you got to do that and just keep it really professional but then sometimes they'll be play they'll be like more chatty and fun so you can add in a little bit of, of playfulness as well yeah so this is like being adaptable between yeah when you have to be professional you yeah. must be professional and when yeah, you can yeah, be yeah. a little bit playful then yeah. okay <laughs> Usually we either have one of that. Uh -huh. Okay, so now, <laughs> is there anything that you have to do and work on harder than everyone else when you first come to Thailand? Is there anything you try to do oh. in order to get along better? I had to do to get uh, along is, better, is, like is my language good? skill. I couldn't speak Thai, so I had to learn how to speak and read and write. So, I'm not very good still, as you can tell, because I'm in, speaking in English, but uh, yeah, I just had to, I had the language barrier and my agent at the time didn't speak English so every day with him in the car for the majority of, of the day was just like trying to fill the dead air of like, oh, what's that sign? Oh, look at, what's that number plate? Yeah, so trying to learn all the alphabet from him, yeah. Okay. yeah. Is there anything related to the culture, the personality related that you have to oh. like, oh, this, we don't have that in, in uh, England or... The, the, the road manners, I had to get used to that. <laughs> in England, it's like, oh, you go first, you go first. But here it's like, no, no. Yeah, it's like, outside of the cars, everybody's like, smiley, happy. And then they get in the car, it's like, I'm a killer. Yeah. yeah. What do you do to, to try to get to that? Um, we still... We're still having problems yeah, with that. Yeah. Uh, I had to kind of be more aggressive, but not not like aggressive, aggressive, but more aggressive on the road and not as giving, basically. Because, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't get anywhere. It'd be just sit, sitting in the car. <laughs> Everybody. I can boop, wait boop, for boop. 10 hours and you go, yeah, you go. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. In, in terms of culture, yeah, do, yeah. You, do you think any. Any, what do you like the most about Thai culture, let's say? I like the family aspect, like 
they stick looking after their parents or being in mm, more like a, not what is it collective yeah more collective and not like in England when you move out at a certain age and you just live away in Thailand from what I see there's lots of still living with the parents but it's not through not being able to not live with the parents it's through choice so I like the family environment it's it's nice yeah. how do you think that uh, family environment actually shapes individuals into a better person I think just consideration for like parents or some consideration for, for the kids or whatever having to live with somebody and knowing what they what they're like and uh, how, how they want to live and having to uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> having to sometimes make compromises with to, to like be happy and live together yeah so now we are getting more into creativity yeah um, what do you like about art I like Sometimes, uh, having a break away from being around lots of people, just like sitting, doing some kind of artwork and it's just time for yourself and it's, it's relaxing and at the end you get something out of it as well. You can, it's, it's a piece that you can actually show people or appreciate for yourself or whatever. So, it's all good. It's like win, 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 win. Trying to, if you start something and finish it, which is, which is, I've got so many things at home that I haven't finished. So I try to get them finished and it, I see them every day thinking, oh, I need to get that done, I need to get that done. But then it's just in the back of my mind, I, I, like needing to get stuff done. So if you start something, finish it. Yeah. So I need to still do that. People say that, you know, especially in artwork and yeah. You know, a lot of work today, especially in the entertainment industry or art industry and all of that. People say that you know, it's all about God-given talent to to be able to to become successful. A lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm not good enough, maybe because I was not born for this." Maybe. Mm. Uh, do you agree with that? I think everybody can draw. Like, it just takes different amount of time. So, practice makes perfect. Like, just if you keep practicing at something, then you'll be able to do it. It's it's like everything, isn't it? Yeah. Um, some people are like, um, I'm probably not good in drawing or singing or yeah. acting because I was maybe I was not born for it. Is it true? I, I don't think it's not born for something. I think it's just you haven't put time aside to focus on that. You've been focusing on other stuff. So if you focused on what you think you're not good at, then you'd get good. Do you have like uh, any tips to boost your creativity? Uh, bleh. <laughs> so parents are like, oh, I'm waiting for the time for me to be creative, so then I can start the work. No. Nah. Is it true? Is do you need mm. that kind of? Thing? I don't know. I think I'd be. I I would start thinking I was just making up excuses for waiting to for creativity to come. So. While while waiting, I would be like sketching or working or think trying to do something to to push a result. So if I was trying to uh, think of a logo, I wouldn't be thinking. I wouldn't just be sitting and like, oh, when's the creativity coming? When's it coming? I'd be sketching and thinking, oh, what if what if I draw it like this? Or what if I draw it like this? and keeping going until ah, I get something from that, and then it becomes what I want it to be. Yeah. Uh, from an artist's perspective, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for like, I'm not sure if this is stereotypical, but then some some of the artists would definitely like. Uh, for you, it's not happening, but some for some people, is it true that a lot of artists are like, uh, uh, you know, entirely call it like atma ad uh, means sometimes. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> not sociable and, and maybe because you're like another category with like a lot of artists we see and we think and yeah. stereotyped about is that oh they're gonna keep to themselves and then they're gonna be like uh, you know thinking and 
um, they need to wait for the right moment to work or something like that. Is it I just, it's, being in that community? Do you think it, it's real? It's true? Yeah, people are different. Some people, they that could be how they work. So, hmm. Or well, that's maybe it's just they're, they're more comfortable being alone. So, and that's how they get their inspiration. I don't know. So it just depends on people. Uh, personally, I I don't know. I just adapt to whatever's going on and try and work from that. Oh, people are talking about passion here and there a lot, yeah. right? Um, I'm not sure if I, I'm mistaken it, but I think everybody is talking about passion right now. You need passion for this and passion for that. Um, do you yeah. think so? Or do you think that passion really, really helps um, you succeed and, and all, all of that? Passion in anything. Like, you wanted to be a chef, then you'd need a passion to kind of, for cooking. So, your, your desire or your want to do, to cook, would push you towards succeeding. Like you, you would enjoy what you're doing, and it would make you want to do it more and more, and practice more and more to succeed. Like anything, like if you wanted to be an artist and a passion for drawing, then etc. Yeah. Sometimes passion can be short-lived as well, as, as you can see. Like, is there anything you do, or you think anybody does, to keep your passion alive? Hmm. Well, I don't actually get to do all the arty stuff that I like. So, uh, lots of the projects I do are on the computer. But I do really, really like painting, like just normal on canvas and whatnot. Uh, so, once in a, in a while, then I'll, if I have any time, then I will try and paint as, as much as I can. I think that's a passion, or is it just a hobby? So, it's, I really enjoy it, and it's nice to to just to paint sometimes. What would your perfect room look like? Perfect room. Room, yeah, come out of the blue, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually we often think the stereotypically that uh -huh. if you enter a room of an artist, you see a pile of uh, artworks and everything like here and there around. And okay. For you, do you think? You think you need like a neat space to do it, or you sometimes sometimes they say there are some tips for for <laughs> artists to like. I'm trying to guess. Okay. 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 Um, that you need like a, I wouldn't say a, a lot of things on your tables to mm. be able to think something. Is it true? One thing I like to have a, a an open space or a view of something to look up to when I'm working. So not sitting looking at a wall like this when I'm working. So being able to look up and see a view or something that's nice around me. Uh, but inside, if it's a room, uh, I think I'd probably split it in half. Half of it would be really, really messy and just be arty stuff everywhere. And the other half would be really clean. Oops, yeah really clean uh, and I'd be able to go and eat on this side, on the clean side and then go back to being a pig and dirty and whatnot. Yeah. So the last question is really our concept of, of you know, Glau Lisa and Tarai is really about why should we focus on ourselves and on improving ourselves. Right? Yeah. So what do you think about people that are pointing fingers, blaming, oh this is not good, that is not good, because of that I'm not good or I'm not successful, uh, but never really turn back to look at themselves and say, mm. how can I improve? What do you think about that? Don't do it. <laughs> stop, stop like uh, throwing the blame around, just like try and find a way of, of fixing the problem that has been caused or trying to make this situation better. Yeah. Why is it important to, to, to not do that and do look back? What's, what's the point? What do you get out of pointing and saying, you, you, you did that wrong? Who, who wins? Nobody. So maybe ask, okay, how can we fix this? And then do it from that. Some people like to... I've got a very high tolerance level to, to, to like, like maybe rudeness or whatever. 
but if I pass that line, then it's gone. Like, uh, not, not fun. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make him cross over. <laughs> can we do one last question? Yep. We can try. Yeah. I don't think you'll get a very good answer. <laughs> well, it will be fine, yeah. Okay, um, so it's the question. Should I ask him Thai? You can try, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, บอกให้คนอื่นแก้ให้เราคนโทคนอื่นไม่ได้เราก็คนโทตัวเองได้เราก็ควรจะปรับตัวเองให้ให้ดีก่อนแล้วค่อยไปเอ๊ะแต่